Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here live with James Jacob Prash. This is Glad You Asked, our question of the week, guilt by association versus guilt by cooperation, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Blessings in Jesus, dear friends, and thank you for this pointed question. Actually, we have addressed the issue various times in various Q&As and in Bible studies, but let's look at it focally in context. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we'll just read the passage beginning in verse 9. I wrote you in my letter not to associate with immoral people. I did not at all mean with the immoral people of this world, or with the covetous and swindlers and with idolaters, for then you'd have to go out of the world. But actually, I wrote you not to associate with any so-called brother. If he is an immoral person, or covetous, or an idolater, a reviler, a drunkard, or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one, what do I have to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church? But those who are outside, God judges. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves. Now, the conclusion of this passage addresses this gross misunderstanding that many naive and undiscerning Christians have, although I can understand and forgive it if it's with young believers who just don't know the scriptures well enough yet. That is, judge not, we don't say anything, we let God deal with error, we just love and let the gospel be made a public mockery of, the way that the money preachers discredited in the eyes of the world and in the name of love were supposed to let them do it. This is, of course, sick and perverted. This is the direct opposite of what the scriptures say. If God says something is wrong, that's not you or I judging. I saw a comment on a blog site yesterday of a rather, again, a gullible, naive woman, just a religious babbler is what she was, perhaps a believer, but she was behaving like an ignorant religious babbler. Touch not my anointed. Too ignorant to know, once again, that all three places, that passage refers to David's encounter at Ein Gedi, with King Saul. No, David would not touch him because he was God's anointed. It's questionable if many of these money preachers today are. Nonetheless, Saul was. David would not touch him. But this did not tell, I'm sorry, but this did not prevent David from telling the truth about him, that he was a backslider and a murderer, nor that it stopped Samuel under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit from writing the truth about him, that he was a backslider and a murderer. These silly, ridiculous, ignorant people, even though they're professing to be Christians, who respond with touch not my anointed every time you point out that somebody discrediting the gospel is doing so, these are just people who Satan loves to hear them talk because they always speak ignorant rubbish that gives him a green light to discredit the gospel in the eyes of the world. Here Paul tells us that we do judge those who are within inside the church, not with our own judgment, but on the basis of what God's word says. False teachers, false gospels, false prophets who mislead the church and discredit the message of Jesus must be publicly confronted and renounced. That includes Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Cindy Jacobs, Bill Johnson, Treflo Dollar, etc. But that's the end of the passage. Let's look at the beginning. Immoral people, I did not mean immoral people of this world. Jesus was attacked by the religious establishment of his day, hypocritical people largely, because of his association with tax gatherers, prostitutes, sinners, and so forth. A distinction must be made. There is no guilt by association in <clears throat> having parlance with unsaved people in order to evangelize them. We should be going to prostitutes. We should be going to homosexuals. We should be going to immoral people of this world, to the unsaved with the gospel. That is not guilt by association. That is bringing the gospel to the lost. When you have guilt by association, is where the association <coughs> has an effective and implied 
or a de facto guilt by association. For instance, a Christian going on Revelation TV or TBN, appearing with heretics, not to debate or refute them, but just to go along with the program. These people who say stupid things, and it's stupid. I'm just going to preach my message. God has called me to preach this and to preach that and not to criticize a judge. Whatever they do is up to them. I'm just going on there to say what God told me. This directly contradicts 1 Corinthians 5. I know an evangelist, a friend of mine, hopeless Bible teacher, but a good evangelist in the South Pacific. He had that attitude. He'd go to these bad churches he go in any vehicle open to him to give his message. I warned him. Look, Jesus said to make disciples, not converts. You're leading people to Christ as an evangelist and putting them in bad churches. God just told me to preach the gospel. That was his response. He was safeguarding his ministry, not the work of the Lord. It was his ministry. That's exactly what was his problem. It was his ministry. It was not the Lord's. Well, his own daughter came under the influences of these teachings, went into depression after a medical history of tropical disease, having had a family tragedy, and she took her own life, leaving a baby. His own daughter killed herself, in large part under the influences of the churches he was putting people in. Am I saying it was God's judgment? I can't say that. I can't say it wasn't, but I can say he learned the hard way, and I was not the only one who warned him. No, there is no guilt by association in dealing with unsaved people in order to evangelize them. None. Otherwise, Jesus would be guilty of that. But when the association represents a de facto cooperation, if you're going on Revelation television or on TBN, you become identified with them. The world will put you in the same chariot. We deal with this on a teaching we did a number of years ago on King Jehoshaphat when he was riding in Ahab's chariot. It's a bad thing. You become confused with them in the eyes of the world. They think you're one of them. This idea of people who are more or less doctrinally sound, solid, call it what you will, going into these venues <coughs> or broadcasting outlets where they are identified in the public eye with the other people who may be and who are often heretical, apostates, immoral. <coughs> That is not guilt by association. That is guilt by cooperation. And they should not be doing it. I have seen people who should know better do this. Greg Laurie being one of many. Why is he associating with the pathetic likes of Hillsong as one example in the United States? No, his gospel is not a perverted one. But Hillsong's is. What's he doing? He's violating 1 Corinthians chapter 5. That's what he's doing. It's not right. We are told not to do it. There is no guilt by association in dealing with the unsaved when our contact with them has the intent, the nature of evangelizing them of trying to reach them with the gospel before it's too late. None. You can talk to homosexuals, you can talk to prostitutes, to pimps, to drug dealers, to anybody. They need Jesus. And we have the message of Jesus. But to consort with so-called brothers, swindlers, con artists, heretics, false prophets, apostates, that association is not guilt by association. It is that kind of association that equals guilt by cooperation. We are participating with them. We are told not even to greet such a one as a brother. 
Oh, he's a good brother. No, he isn't. He's a so-called brother. Kenneth Copeland's not my brother. Jesse Duplantis is not my brother. And if you love Jesus, they're not yours. They're so-called brothers. You share a platform with them. You lend any credence, credibility, endorsement, sanction, visibly to the public eye of these people. You're participating in their sins and you will share in their plagues because it's false religion, Revelation chapter 18. Thank you so much for your question. My name is James Jacob Prash. We're glad you asked. God bless. Thank you, Jacob.